This is a mesh-tastic device made uh, for outdoor use with a small solar panel and a waterproof case made by Rack Wireless, R-A-K Wireless. We're going to set this up today, take a look at it, and see what it does. We've been doing a lot with Mesh-tastic over the last month or two since Dayton Hamvention. I got this from an Etsy website link. Uh, Josh had featured one of these in one of the videos he did and I'm like where did you get that one because it's waterproof it's supposed to be weatherproof it's got this little solar panel on it which I think they've determined is too small to actually keep the thing charged I mean if you're in perfect sunlight every day if you live in Hawaii you know this might be great if you live in a place where there's the sun is out all day long and you don't get much rain or clouds then this might work just fine but I think they've they've got some newer versions of this that have a, has a larger solar panel. So maybe we'll pick one of those up soon. But today we're going to be looking at this. I'm going to flash it. I'm going to show you how to find out information about it. And we're going to kind of take a look and get it all connected to our existing Mesh-tastic, small Mesh-tastic network that I have here at the house. This is the Etsy shop. It's uh, created by Garth VH, Garth Victor Hotel. And this one at the top right here, that's the that's the device I have. But if you scroll down and look for devices he has for sale, he doesn't actually have any of these listed right now. Now, I'm not seeing... Yeah, there were some other ones on here the other night when we did our live stream. He had one like this, except it didn't have this little solar panel on it. It had an external solar panel that was like maybe four times the size of this one. And it was like $139 for that. And I'm like, well, I should probably buy one of those. But let me get through this one first, and then I'll do that next. Uh, and apparently, I'm guessing he sold out of them because they're not even here anymore. But this is the website. I will share this link in the description below because this is the website where this device came from so this is the device right here as you can see it has these um kind of coarsely threaded screws that you have to take out and open up and i did this because i didn't know i didn't know this i don't remember reading this on the web page but since the web page isn't available anymore i don't <laughs> i can't go back and confirm or anything like that but uh if i get this there we go okay so you see right here it contains the rack wireless um starter kit board it has its own 18650. I didn't know if it came with its own battery, but it does. It comes with its own battery. Uh, it's obviously a rechargeable battery because it's got this solar panel wired directly into it. Okay, so the solar panel is here, and then positive and negative coming out going directly into the board. It's one of those little two-pin connectors there. That's cool. I've got it plugged up right now to USB-C. This is the USB-C cable right here. So it will charge via USB-C or will charge via solar. Uh, so I always thought, I thought we were talking on the live stream the other night and uh, somebody said something about a bio solar panel and they're like, well, this is like a, this is like a three volt, I think, system, a uh, 3.4 volt or something like that. These 18650s are 3.7 volts. So it's a 3.7 volt system. And of course, USB-C, USB, all the USBs are five volts. But a lot of your bio solar panels have USB output. So if you just had an extra bioinno solar panel laying around and you wanted to take the USB output out of the bioinno and plug it into the USB-C and set and lay out the bioinno or hang it somewhere you could totally charge this via USB from a 12 volt solar panel you wouldn't have to get a specific 3.7 volt solar panel presumably this is like a 3.7 or a special voltage solar panel that goes into here it does have a built-in charge controller according to the website so it's not going to overcharge the battery or anything like that but you can't just throw 12 or 15 or 19 volts into it because it's not going to handle that you have to have a specialized solar panel for it but with a USB-C connection, you could totally use a bioinno or anything else that has USB output. Something for another day, maybe. I like to open it up because I, I got to see what I have, okay? Has its own 18650, and I'm told these green 18650s are made by Panasonic, or some of the green ones are made by Panasonic, and those are the best ones to have. This guy right here, which is what I have in my T-beam in the truck right now, this is, this is just an Amazon special. Rechargeable, 9900 milliamp hour 18650. That's a lie. That they, these are not 9,900 milliamp hours. It's, there's no way. They might be two to 3,000 milliamp hours. And my own personal experience is that this little pillow battery that, uh, that TO called it, 3,000 milliamp hour pillow battery actually lasts longer than this 18650 does. So I'll be curious to see how well this one in the, um, in the rack device works. So my main question was, when we go to the website here, okay, so we go right here. And we see all these, we go to flasher.meshtastic.org, and we see all of these uh, devices right here. There's two rack devices listed. There's a rack 11310, 
and a rack 4631. I don't really know which one this is because this one doesn't have a screen and it doesn't tell us anything. So which one of these do I choose? And I don't know what version of firmware it has because again, it doesn't have a screen on it. So this is a question that I had. Did a quick Google search. It was very easy to find. No, not, not a big deal at all. But basically, if you look right here, you might not be able to see that in the camera. If you look right here, that right there says, it's upside down in the camera, I realize that. Right there on top of that, it says Rack 4630. Now, 4631 is the one in the website. This says 4630, so pretty much those are probably, this 4631 is probably an upgraded version, not a big deal. But the other way you can do it is to open up your app, and once you're connected to it here, these are all my Meshtastic nodes that I have around me. Um, all my personally owned nodes. It says connected to Rack 4631, and it tells you the firmware version right there, which is 2.3.6.7 Alpha 3570 Alpha is what it says right there. So it'll tell you what the what the board is, and it'll tell you what the current firmware version is. So great. So that means we can go over here like this now, and we can say 4631. Okay, good. Select firmware version, and the firmware versions that are shown here is uh, the 2.3.6.7 is right here, 3570 Alpha. And then the next one is 2.3.10. Delta. 2.3.10 and then a Delta string of numbers right now. And all, these are all the beta ones. So I'm going to choose that one. I'm going to go to Flash. It's going to give me all of this stuff here. Continue. And it tells me to enter. Do it. See, this screen is different depending on which Meshtastic radio device you chose on the previous screen. So right here, it says enter DFU mode. And I'm going to pick which one it is. Uh, you guys can't see that, but it's got a little flasher window that popped up and it tells me all, all the USB devices I've connected right now. Enter DFU mode. As soon as I put it into DFU mode, it popped up this window. and It's basically mounted it as a drive now because it shows three files inside of drive E, which is mounted on my, on my Windows box as a, as, a, as a mountable drive now. And on this screen, it says, ensure devices in D DFU mode when mounted. Okay, that's fine right there. And then the drive may be a different name depending on your device and bootloader. Yeah, this, that, they just give it a sample right there. That's not exactly it. And then I download this UF2. Download and copy UF2 to the file DVU drive. Firmware should be flashed after the file download and device reboot. So what you do is you download this right here. Okay, and then I open up this folder. I grab it from my downloads file, and you guys can't see that, but I'm going to drag it over into the window that popped up, which is now a mountable drive. So now I'm drag it, dragging it over into the window that popped up as a mountable drive, and once that's done, I will reboot the device, and it will auto-load the firmware. There's several radios that work kind of the same way, where you, you drag a file into a folder, and then you reboot, it does its own kind of firmware update thing, so that's that's good there. In fact, it looked, okay, it finished, it went away, the, the window went away. Okay, so that drive is no longer mounted on my computer. So I am waiting for it to do its thing now. I've got some flashing lights here. This light is red here. This light is green here. And you can see that, yeah, the flashing, the green is flashing in a non-random sequence. And the red light is kind of flickering. So I'm gonna let it go and let it do its thing here for just a few minutes. Okay, as soon as I dragged that file to the window that was mounted, that was a mounted drive, I heard the USB tone for when you pull the USB out of the computer where it says it's been disconnected. I heard that tone and I watched it for a couple minutes and I decided to open up the app again because I never heard it reconnect to the computer. But if I open up the app right now, it shows me that I am connected, uh, I'm still connected. 2.0 rack is what I called this, and it is uh, 2.3.10. So our firmware successfully updated. I didn't really do anything other than drag that file over. It took care of everything else on its own. So that's that was easy enough. So now we can go in here, and we can uh, I can put the, the lid back on this thing here. Put this back on, so make sure it ni gets nice and tightly waterproof down in there. So I've still got my USB cable plugged in here in the back. I can pull that out whenever, but I can see my truck. My truck is sitting in the driveway right now with an external antenna. In fact, I'm going to do a video about the Meshtastic setup in my truck and talk about the antenna that I use and the T-beam, just kind of how it's been working around town here for the last couple weeks since I've returned home from Dayton Hamvention. Now, while I'm putting this back together, let me tell you about PCBWay.com. They are sponsoring this video. And if you go out and want to buy a Meshtastic device, 
and you want to get something 3D printed for it, you can head over to PCBWay.com and you can upload STL files directly to their website and you can get professional grade 3D printing of these files that will fit almost perfectly your Meshtastic device, a T-Beam, a Helltech, one of the rack wireless devices. You know, there's a plethora of different devices out there for Meshtastic these days. And you can get them all printed at PCBWay.com. They do custom CNC machine printing, custom circuit board printing, and all of the things. Head over to their website. You can see this. I am going to upload some SDL files myself and order them for a couple of different Meshtastic devices and get them delivered myself. I'm going to buy them. I'm going to upload them. I might do it under my wife's name or something. I'm going to upload them. I'm going to purchase them, pay for them, get them shipped to me, and then I'm going to look and see what it looks like because I don't want it sending me something special since they sponsor my channel, which they probably wouldn't do anyway, but just in case, just to make sure there's no ambiguity to that. I'm going to get some 3D printed cases from PCB Way, but if you do order from them, tell them thank you for sponsoring Ham Radio 2.0. Okay, we've got this all put back together. I've got this screwed down here, the solar panel's on there, this nice antenna that comes with it is on there. Well, two of the things I don't like about this device right here is, um, number one, you can't really tell if it's powered on or not. There's no lights, there's no indicators. You, you can look in this right here, you can see a light in there, but if you have this out and uh, mounted somewhere up on a pole or something like that, this little plug comes with it. So this plug comes with it to keep water out of that hole. So it is, a, it is truly a waterproof case that is made to be mounted outside. So you can't really tell if it's on or not. So the only way to do that is to connect to it with the app on your phone or tablet or device or something like that. So I've got that connected right here. It hasn't updated the name. Well, the name right here says 2.0 rack. It says that in this field right here. But if down here in the uh, available radios, it still still says Meshtastic 2872. Incidentally, when I bought this from the website, it already had that firmware that you saw on there earlier. That was there. Some of these Helltech devices come with another version of LoRa that's not Meshtastic that you have to flash over. This came with actual Meshtastic firmware. So Garth over there on the uh, Zetsi store, he's got this ready to go for you. Bas basically, all you have to do is plug it in, connect to it on your phone, and go. But then we're going to look right here, and I'm going to see that's 2.0 rack. That's my that's one of my Helltechs that's inside KC5HWB-V. That's my truck, and that is, uh, that's another Helltech that I have inside. So that's all it's seeing right now. I don't have MQTT turned on. I probably will turn on Wi-Fi so that I can get a longer range because you can control the device via Wi-Fi or via Bluetooth. If I put it high enough up on my house, I won't be able to connect to it with Bluetooth. It'll be out of the range of Bluetooth. These are messages that I, that I had from Hamvention. They've transferred over since this is now connected to my, my truck node. So testing right there. See if it sends it out. I was tinkering around with my... Oh, it did send it. There you go. I was tinkering around with my truck node earlier, and we've got a lot of storms in the area right now, and I could not get a message to send in the long fast room. But that just sent... So perhaps somebody on the live stream the other night said to pull down some, some fresh nodes, you can uh, send a message to, to the main chat room, the long fast chat room. Well, that's what I just did. So once again, this is going up on the house. I'm going to put it, I've got a two story house. My house is basically a big square. Okay, so there's the downstairs and the upstairs right on top of it. So it's double stacked, actually. You got to have a really tall ladder to get up on top of my roof, which I, I had at one point. In I had borrowed one at one point in time, but I never owned my own. So I can't even get on my own roof right now. But I got I got some friends who's a ladder. I, I can borrow a ladder or something. So I'm going to get up and put this like on top of a chimney or maybe on a little post. I'm actually looking at a new roof mount tower to put my VHQ hex beam on. So um, hopefully all of that will transpire soon this year before the weather gets too hot to get up on top of a roof in the middle of the summer. Interested to see how far this will work, how long this solar panel will last. I will do a follow-up video after I put it on the roof. I might wait like, uh, like probably a month and kind of make some notes along the way, how long the battery lasts, how well the solar panel works, what kind of range I might be getting. I'll drive out away from it and try to get a range to it and whatnot, because you could do a, a trace route through the uh, through the app to see what you're seeing and whatnot. Going to do a follow-up to this later on. Put a comment below. Let me know what Meshtastic device you're using, how far of a range you've got. Have you got one on your house? Have you got an outdoor unit up somewhere? What is it 
send me a link to it, you won't be able to put a link into the YouTube comments. Those of you who put links and URLs in the YouTube comments and then you never see them show up, I have that turned off to prevent spam bots from coming in there. So nature of the beast. Sorry, there's nothing I can do about that. But send me a link, send me an email with a link of what external Meshtastic device you have in your home and let me know how well you like it and how well it's working for you. If you enjoyed this video about Meshtastic, check out these videos over here. Thanks a lot for watching today.